Okay, this is a video on dealing with leopard geckos in the winter. Now, as you may know, leopard geckos are ectothermic, which means they rely on an external heat source to keep their body temperatures at a suitable level. They're also poikilothermic, which means they their body temperatures can vary depending on their environment, so it's pretty much the sort of same thing. Uh, there's two options here. In winter, it might be a bit more helpful if you use a thermostat. I only have one, that's why I don't really use this one at the moment, because I sort of want them all to have one. It is more expensive. I actually got £10 off this. I think I got a voucher, so this actually only cost me about £10, which is brilliant, really. Usually they can be about £30. Um, it depends which one you get, really. So geckos usually have to be at 25 to 32 degrees Celsius, which is 77 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're using a, th a thermostat, that's definitely more helpful in the winter. If you're like me, and this is what I've been doing for the last seven years, is using timers, which still do a good job. They might not maintain a temperature but obviously they're doing okay because my geckos are growing, aging, doing what they should be doing. Uh, so timers are okay but it can be a little bit di more difficult in winter. Okay I'll try not to take too long doing this because I've had to unplug the heat mat. Now as you can see it usually comes on about 8am, goes off at 11. So that's a pretty long time really because that's nine hours it goes off. Now, geckos do need a natural uh, temperature dip, hot in the day so they can sleep and warm, and then when it cools down at night they can hunt and they've got all their energy. Basically, the way you see temperature, you've got to see it as uh, the, heat, like the heat mat is charging up your gecko, it's giving it energy. So, for the winter, I am going to, sorry if it goes out of focus, I'm going to bring it to come on at 6.30 and to go off at midnight. So it's only slightly, because actually I have that on quite a long time. Um, but it just leaves a bit of a shorter gap. It's only six and a half hours now with the heat mat off. Okay, sometimes though, um, for some reason, no matter how long you put the heat mat on, as you can see over there, your gecko goes in a cold area. I'm not sure if this is some sort of brumation. Uh, if you don't know what brumation is, it's a sort of hibernation, but they don't full-on go to sleep. I looked after a bearded dragon. Now, they brumate. I'm not totally sure if leopard geckos do, but bearded dragons do, and this one did not move from its hide for three days. <laughs> I've never really known leopard geckos to sleep for days, but they do get maybe a bit more sluggish because they need heat to digest their food, for energy to hunt, basically for the whole system to work. So when the temperature drops, obviously they might be a bit more lethargic, might not eat as much, might not go to the loo as much. And that's why it is important to make sure the temperature is a bit higher up if you want them to keep active. Alternatively, if you're thinking of breeding your geckos in uh, the spring, I've never bred them before, but I have done some research. And I've read that you should allow the temperature to drop like it would naturally, because as it heats up in the spring, they know it's the time to breed. So if you're planning on breeding, Allow the temperature to drop a little bit, but nothing too serious, and make sure they are still quite chubby.